Morning everybody, it's almost 10 o'clock, kettle's boiled, and I wonder if it's really daylight. Yep, yep, it's daylight like, <laughs> it, it, it should probably be daylight by t at least 8 in the morning these days. Yeah, so, I'm going to go out around Belgrade today to a few sites, Nikola Tesla Museum, uh, the House of Flowers, and the former Royal Palace. Uh, they're all within walking distance, I guess, or a bit of a walk, I, I, I guess. So, it's going to be an exciting day. So, I mean, Nikola Tesla's museum is like, open at 10, and then the House of Flowers is at 12, so it just gives me a good time. And my kettle's now boiled. So today, we go to the Nikola Tesla Museum, but um, at first I need to see if I can find something, because uh, there's a chemist nearby. Um, the truth is, like, I always travel with prescription medication because of my medical conditions. My, my worst nightmare is like running out or um, losing my medication. Which has never really happened to me, even though like I lost my aspirin inhalers in Cambodia. I've never like lost my um, my tablets. So I just need to go find and see if they sell this thing. My anxieties are over. I've got my thyroid medication. I got like a hundred tablets. So it should last me a hundred days. <coughs> so now I'm just gonna go back to my apartment and put them in storage and then Let's go to Nikola Tesla Museum, because I don't want to carry this around all day. So just leaving my apartment now. I'm just so pleased that I was able to get my medication today. Because I've never ever in my entire life of traveling in all the 87 nations I've been in prior, had I ever been in a situation like that. I mean, I've never run out of medication because I'm really a smart man. I know what I, how long I'm going to be away from you know, Australia or the United Kingdom. I know like how much medication I need for my trip. I just like need to know, you know, when to reorder before I go away. Like if I'm going to move to another country for a bit, I'll get like the NHS can give me three months of medications without much gibberish. But uh, medi my medication is actually free in. Um, United Kingdom, but it's not free in Australia. It's like it used to be like six bucks in Australia because of oh, I'm on a pension. But then uh, if you work, it's thirty six dollars. Uh, but in Serbia, my medication I just bought was three hundred dinara. So with my medication locked away in my apartment, I can continue on for the rest of the day. So nice. Yeah. Like it's pretty cloudy today, but I'm, I'm kind of certain it may rain, I may not rain, but it doesn't really matter because uh, most of my activities today are actually indoors. So now make my way to the Nikola Tesla Museum. So here we are, Nikola Tesla Museum, opening hours are like 10 till 6, Tuesday to Sunday, it's closed on Mondays, it's typical. Here we are. So inside that building is remains of Nikola Tesla in a round golden sphere. So the Nikola Tesla guided tour isn't starting until at least uh, noon. So I got another 50 minutes to hang around. Um, I'm not too sure like what I should do now because. Uh, I mean, the House of Flowers is on the other side of town, and, and uh, I, mean, I could actually do both Nikola Tesla Museum and House of Flowers in a whole day. I mean, the Nikola Tesla Museum should take me at least an hour, but um, yeah. yeah, they're basically just, like, just said, look, uh, come back at 12, because uh, there's no point in like, hanging around. I mean, it, it's 500 Serbian dinar for a tour ticket, so it's not too bad. It's like. Not even five dollars entrance fee, and you get to learn a lot about Nikola Tesla. I mean, like, cause I'm really sick of that Elon Musk guy. You know, like when you're googling for Tesla the bands, you get Nikola Tesla, Elon Musk's like Tesla Motors, and then like, and then you end up finding the like the '80s hard rock band Tesla. So I have 50 minutes to wait until uh, lunchtime. Yes. Because uh, 
They're not going to start the tour till 12. And um, hardly any other tourists are here. You know? I mean, there are probably other foreign tourists in this country, as Serbia has its doors opened, unlike all the other European nations. But, um, yeah, just nobody's waiting to go inside the museum. So I thought, well, I don't want to waste my iPhone battery because I'm going to need that to get to my next two destinations and get home today. So I might as well see what else is in Belgrade for the time being. So this is what they call St. Mark's. Serbian Orthodox Church. Pretty sure it's at least a few hundred years old. But I'm always confusing this one with the bigger one in town, like St. Sava. See, last time I was here, St. Sava Church, it was just still under construction, but I think it's now complete. So we've got my ticket here, and you probably can't read it because it's too dark. It just says the museum is a scientific and culture institution in the world which preserves the Inheritance of Nikola Tesla, founded in 1952, is dedicated entirely to the ingenious Serbian American inventor, scientist, electric mechanism, engineer. And he provided mankind with a large number of significant discoveries and inventions. Tesla's remote control boat and logic gate. And uh, it seems like I gotta sit down for a movie now. I just watched a movie about Nikola Tesla's life for 15 minutes, quite innovating and all. And so we're just gonna see some of these like coils. <laughs> we're gonna see something quite magnificent right now. Now we call it the transformer because we use it to transform electricity in a manner that we increase or decrease voltage. Now this particular Tesla's coil takes standard electricity that has 220 volts that we all use at our homes and it turns it into electricity that has half a million of volts. There are two questions that are presenting themselves to us now. The first one is, how do we get from 220 to 500,000 volts? And the second question is, why would we need electricity that has half a million of volts? So what is the point here? Really? No. So just keep in your mind that I will turn on the Tesla's coil three times, therefore giving three warnings. So just prepare yourself and enjoy the experiment. Okay. Okay. Yes. tingling in my hand. <laughs> That's my medical condition. <laughs> and one signal that has its own specific frequency. So therefore we will have two signals that have different frequencies traveling to two antennas that have matching frequencies to those two signals. 
Therefore, the signals will go through these antennas. They will enter the end logical gate. <laughs> and uh, basically, the end logical gate means that one and the other signal needs to be received, therefore sent, in order for boat to understand the command. Okay? So if we are, we are operating the boat, we need to press both red buttons at the same time, because only then will the end logical gate give the command to the battery to move this mechanical parts over here that are responsible for the moving of the propeller and the stuff. Let's see how this boat uh, works. I will just uh, advise you to stand in the part of the room where you can see the best side of the boat. So the boat has two commands. First one is for the propeller to start moving, second one is for the stern. The stern has its natural route. It goes from the one final end to the other, so it goes from the further left final point to the further right final point and uh, in a reverse direction. You can stop the stir and make it go at any time. So, as you can see now, uh, if you stop the stir at any point other than the two final points, uh, the propeller will not stop. And that is what allows us to control the boat, to direct the boat without the boat having to stop. That is why the boat was made in that uh, order uh, that uh, the propeller uh, stops only when the stir reaches its final. Oh. <laughs> You're, um, just come closer to the source. Closer, please. A little bit more closer. Three, two, one. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. This is Zephyr and Nexus is a coil. This is a shot in the like that. It's still tingling right there. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Still alive though. <laughs> That's like 100,000 volts. So this is the other part of the Tesla Museum. It's all about his personal life. So here they got his name, 1856 to 1943. And like a lot of his like, ancestors. Even going up to 1756. Yes. Uh, his father was a priest and was given a really high award by the Austrian Empire. Because a lot of Serbs had fled to the Austrian Empire during the Ottoman Empire days. Handcraft bag from Lika. That is. That was book of Tesla's light libraries, off his prayer book from 1795. Um, wow. Yeah. Like, like cartoons. Come at you like that. There's this bit about his family history, so that's his father, who was a reverend of the Serbian Orthodox Church, worked in Tesla. His uncle uh, took the name Nikola Peter Manik, Pajo Manik, that's his uncle. So, originally Manik, they changed it to Tesla. Joseph Tesla, Safa, there's no photographs of his mother, but like these are his sisters, Angelica. America and uh, Milka. This is birthplace in Simijan, so that's in Croatia, I think, which is this next to a Serbian Orthodox Church where his father like worked. So I wonder if it's still around. The progressive development of man is vitality dependent on intervention and is the most important product of his creative brain. It's the uh, purpose of the compost master of mind. Over the material world is the hastening of the forces of nature to human needs. Mm. Strong words for a strong man. And then we have a bust, the great man himself. Uh, built 1952, it's like, like nine years after he died. Some of his personal belongings, gloves, hat, belt, shoes. Flying folder for letters. Um, hmm. 
No. And look how neatly it was like stamped. Like just iron on the seal. Look at stationery, his glasses, his like pen knife, clock, um, pocket flashlight, uh, whiskey bottle, um, and this is his typical suit. Uh, and he wore a bowler hat, that's what I like. And there it is. Here remains the ashes of Nikolai Tesla, the most iconic inventor of the 19th and the 20th century. You know, born in the Austrian Empire to Serbian parents, died in New York City, and his remains are encrusted in a silver sphere, which was like used in one of his inventions. So it's really quite iconic for me standing right there in front of the remains of a great man. Rest in peace. God bless Nikola Tesla. So here are a few more things. Uh, see if demonstration made of Argo's experiment. And uh whole thing. Argo's experiment and Tesla's invention of rotating magnetic fields. And here's a photo of them in, uh, like in 1938, like not, but before he died, a few years later. Oh, and look, and this is the plaque manufactured for the Niagara Falls Power Co. by Washington Electrical NFC, 1899, Pittsburgh. And uh, based by like Tesla, like May the 1st, 1888. And uh, Stanley Kennedy, Shamir Tesla. Mm. Wow. Segment of the main cable from the Niagara Falls is inscription on a metal ring, section of the cable through the power. So as I was seeing here like today, like the woman, she turned it on and it, like a, a gold ball was like spinning around and around and around. And then when she turns it off, the ball just kept spinning for a few seconds, right? And then induction motor with short circuits rotor, so things all spins around too. Uh, but also this was the model of the induction motor with an egg shaped rotor. So, the egg shaped rotor, better known as Tesla of Tesla's of Columbus. And then, a sector of three phase A synchronous motor. Um, let's see. So, this is Tesla's demonstration of like, oh, how electricity works. You know? yeah. Power, power, power lines. Power coil, um, okay. for Niagara Hydro power plant. That, that's his um, model of how the power plant worked. Two-phased induction motor with a plate-type rotor. So we're seeing all that, but um, what I just saw like a few minutes ago, the woman pushed these two buttons. They send power through here, through here, and then. The motors start spinning and turning. Yes. So this includes my tour of Nikola Tesla's museum. I give it a thumbs up, five stars, ten out of ten. Really magnificent. Really worth the five hundred Serbian dinar it costs to get in as a single adult tourist.